I'm C. Virginia Fields, President and CEO of the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. And the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS is the oldest and largest organization of its kind in the United States that focuses on uh, mobilizing, educating, and empowering local leaders to fight HIV AIDS in their communities. I'm excited about this video because this video will be an important tool for helping to get the message in communities where we simply don't have the ability to always be. It tells the stories of women who are infected, those who are working in the field, some of our experts, and I think it just provides a variety of information that will help us in our fight. I'm a professional black woman, there, and I was in love with a man. I did the whole thing I was supposed to do. I was in a relationship for five years, and um, he got pneumonia. And for, in my heart, I felt like it wasn't just a regular cold. So your test results came back, Ms. Gamble, and your test is positive. And I was like, Okay, so I'm guess, I guess I'm going to get a shot, and we're going to get past this, right? Not within my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be HIV positive. That just was not part of my plan. Why are you talking to us about this? This isn't our disease. It could be, and it might be, and it is all of our disease. We should all be concerned about HIV. Many women. Many women, one women. Many, many, many women, one voice. Women, women, one, women one, one voice. Many women, one voice. This is now a disease about us. This is now a disease that is squarely in the African American community. It is a disease for which the disparities in numbers are just striking, and they're unacceptable. How can we be, as a community, 12 to 14 percent of the U.S. population and be 45 to 60 percent of the new infections? We thought this epidemic really was about men. And at one point, it was about white men. And at one point, it was about white homosexual men. Then it became about drug users. Then it became about prostitutes. Then it became about people getting blood transfusions. But it was never about women, and it was never ab about African-American women. <laughs> I was clueless. I didn't think that it could happen to me because I was a mother of four hairstylists. Oh, I had it sealed in the city of Atlanta. It was considered a gay, white, male disease, and I did not see myself at risk because I was not an IV drug user, and I didn't consider myself as having risky behavior. Law school afforded me the opportunity to be able to decide where I was gonna live, how I was gonna make my living, and so that never entered my mind that I would have a health concern. I wasn't being told to uh, not to uh, use a syringe or not to, to, or to use condoms. That wasn't uh, on billboards nowhere. I didn't get tested because I thought I was at risk. I got tested because I was pregnant and it was offered. And it was just like rolled into the other um, routine tests, you know, and it was like somewhere in there, they said, do you want to take an HIV test? Do you want to take, and I was like, yeah, sure. You know, thinking, I'm okay. But I wasn't. One of the reasons why African-American women have been so impacted by this epidemic is because we thought it was about someone else. We heard stories about this disease, and we said we don't want it. We very easily have an escape hatch, and that escape hatch is, it's not about me. It's about someone else. I met him in church. I never thought that I would be at risk. Or when I got married, I thought that I was safe. And we talk all the time about how marriage will not protect you. A lot of people also feel disengaged from the HIV conversation, especially individuals who are young professionals um, like myself. You know, we don't have those same experiences. We're not at risk. We're not the high-risk people. I don't want you to look at me and say, 
we're different, we're, we're miles apart, because we're not. We, we're the same person, really. It's just that I'm on this side with HIV and you over here, you're negative for the moment. It's a virus. It's not you're a bad person. It's a virus. It's not that you, oh, did this bad behavior. It's a virus. It is a communicable infectious disease. And you can get it one of four ways. And you can prevent transmission. And the number one thing to do is for you to know your status and for you to be safe and aware. Are you having unprotected sex? with someone who may or may not be positive, but if you don't know their status, then you're at risk. We're African-American, and almost being African-American puts you at a greater risk for HIV, potentially getting HIV AIDS infection in this country. As an ethnic group, or as a group of women, we are the least likely group in the United States to date or marry or have relationships with anyone outside of our race. Which means if the pool of the epidemic, if the higher incidence is concentrated within pockets in the black community and we only have sex and then it's unprotected in our communities, then we increase our risk and that impacts us dramatically. The safest way to ensure that you will not get HIV AIDS is by not engaging in sex, whether it's anal or, or vaginal sex, absolutely. However, we have to live in reality and we know that there's a certain percentage of people that are engaging in sexual relationships, no matter what they are. And so we need to be able to address that. Consistent condom use, that's a necessity, but it's not sufficient. Before we use condoms, we have to love ourselves, believe in ourselves, and think of our relationships. We need to address the more interpersonal or communication activities. We need to talk about more about relationships. And what about relationships puts women at risk of HIV? It's not like cancer. It's not like diabetes. It's 100% preventable. We can control it. And we need to take charge. In terms of the barriers to accessing the information or to acting on what folks learn, for the most part, is still really rooted in stigma, shame, and discrimination. Because for most of us, no matter how you cut the risk of HIV, especially for adults or young adults, um, is, is somehow connected to sexual behavior. It may be issues of just not knowing what to say, or just feeling very uncomfortable saying it. Stigma is another factor affecting women. They just feel stigmatized if they talk about issues of safer sex and condoms. I don't think there's anything more complicated and more difficult to maneuver than sex and pleasure and conversations around what you like and what the other person likes. It just, it, it doesn't get more complicated. African Americans are very conservative people on a moral basis. And so it's not easy for us to talk openly about relationships. And so when a young lady is attempting to address the HIV AIDS issue and she takes it to her significant other, be it her husband or a dating partner or a boyfriend, and she says, I think we should get tested, a couple of things that they run into is one, are you out there sleeping with several men? Or um, are you accusing me of being out there sleeping with several women? Looking at the black church, one of the things that um, the church often doesn't talk about is human sexuality. If we're gonna have an impact on HIV and AIDS, we're gonna have to talk about uh, human sexuality because people in the church are having sex. You wanna respect someone's culture, you wanna respect their religion, but you also want them to be empowered enough to protect itself. African American women um, should know their status. Get tested. I've been tested publicly many times as a member of Congress. I think it's very important for elected officials and grassroots leaders to get tested. We talk about getting tested. That 20 minutes is an important 20 minutes in your life. 
and you think about everything that you've ever thought about in those 20 minutes when you get tested for HIV, it's a serious moment. I want every African American woman to take that 20 minutes and have their life be serious enough for themselves that it's worth that 20 minute intervention. That's what this is really all about. Take the 20 minutes to find out. Take the 20 minutes to check on yourself. When we know better, we do better. When you know your HIV status, you're going to be encouraging your partner to know their HIV status. You're going to encourage your girlfriends to know their HIV status. When you become educated, you educate your community, you educate your church, you educate your family. Testing gives you power. Um, it gives you the power if you are negative to stay negative and to protect yourself. It also gives you power when you are positive to get into treatment early as well as protect yourself and to be able to protect others. HIV is the virus that causes the infection. So when people first test, we're looking for whether or not they have the virus. If the virus goes untreated in the body, it destroys the immune system, and then the person develops AIDS. So getting tested early and starting on medicines when indicated uh, is more likely to uh, prolong someone's life. I have so many patients who come in and say, I feel great, I feel fine, I don't care what my numbers say, I don't want to go on medication because I feel fine. Why should I go on medication? I hear that all the time. But then you have to explain to people about the biology of the infection. And when you take the time to explain to them that once this virus gets into your system, it has a singular mission, which is to go in and destroy your immune system. And once that is done, it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of if you're going to get some other infection that might kill you. It's when you'll get to that point. Having AIDS doesn't mean you're going to die. It meant that in 1981 because we didn't know what it was. But now we have treatment. We have support for people with HIV. The medications are much more tolerable. There are fewer side effects. And on most of the regimens that we, we treat people with now, you only have to take the medicines once or twice a day. I am a very strict person in taking my meds every day. And that's why I'm here today, because I keep my appointments and I take care of myself. I walk, I think positive, okay? I pray, I laugh, I live. So the important things is health all over. So it's not just a virus. HIV is just one part of this pie. We still have to take care of all the other pieces. You are a total package. As one who was born and grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, I was a part of the uh, civil rights movement there, and that was always led by members uh, in the church and the church leaders. So we want to bring them into this fight, help to fight stigma, discrimination, and shame. This is a hard ministry, you know, to do. But I've grown to a place where I say thank you, God, for giving us the privilege of being able to address these issues. This is what ministry really means. This is what being prophetic really means. With any movement that has happened in the past, whether it's been the civil rights movement, the women's movement, labor movement, it all comes from the people that are experiencing the injustice. I think another place that we're gonna be able to turn the tide is when we have even greater and more meaningful involvement of people living with HIV in every level and every sector of this epidemic. So it's important as a positive woman that I set a positive example and I become a role model. When we talk about African American girls and their leadership role in HIV, I think that there needs to be genuine participation from um, being on decision-making bodies, whether it's having them organize at their local church around building a program, whether they are the girl on the corner who's passing out condoms. All young women want to be a leader. First, let's break the silence. We've got to face reality. 
We've got to understand what is taking place and we've got to speak with one voice. Secondly, get registered to vote and, and organize politically in your community. In a lot of ways, the woman is the leader. And once women take on a cause, it kind of like, it's like a tidal wave. It just kind of rolls right out there and everybody else then jumps on board. We've been hit hard by a whole lot of stuff for all of our lives and our parents' lives and our grandparents' lives. And this is another hard thing that's hit our community. But it's not so unique that we can't handle it and that we can't address it. I'm inspired by a legacy of surviving slavery. I'm inspired by stories of Harriet Tubman who makes a decision that she's going to leave the South and she's gonna take folks with her and there's no turning back. My community has made sacrifices for the generation that's here. And we have the responsibility to do whatever we can to make the same sacrifices for those that come and the same sacrifices for our own healthy lives. It's just as important as the civil rights movement was when we all came together and decided that we weren't going to sit on the back of the bus anymore. That one woman stood up and the rest of us stood up with her. So I'm hoping that African-American women will make that same move, that we will all stand up in unison and say that we're not going to take it anymore and we're going to um, eliminate this, this disease. It is going to take that sense of, I am looking this disease boldly, squarely in the eye and saying, I will not let you have decades more of women. At the end of the day, we are here to be each other's guide. I have a life experience that I can share. You have a life experience that you can share with me. If we blend all those experiences, it becomes one voice. Take care of yourself. You're beautiful. You're a beautiful black woman, and God wants you here, and you have a lot to give. HIV is not going to beat me. It stops here. One voice.